Hello and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is July 1, 2016. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Thanks for joining. Today again is July 1st. Can you believe we're on to the second half of the year? And we're going to be working on Dear Jane. And as you can see, I am outside. I'm trying something new. Just 20 minutes ago, you could see the whole garden behind me. Now, of course, it's black. But it still feels lovely. I'm out here on the vineyard, and it's a cool, breezy night, but not too breezy, and it's lovely. So grab your project, and let's see what we can get done together in 60 minutes. I am making the Dear Jane block called Rebecca's Basket. And I pulled up a big picture of it on Pinterest. It's that one. And as for those of you who are here, have been here before, you know I'm making a Dear Jane in blues and turquoises, a beachy theme. Tonight's no different. I am using this plaid blue for my basket and my white and you can't I know you can't see it but on here is a print a white on white print and that's my backing my background I'm doing a paper piecing method and I printed out the paper using my software and it should be a very easy block I figured I'd go for an easier block while I still can because I thought maybe out here I didn't know if it would be windy. I didn't know if it would be buggy. It's not buggy yet, knock on wood. And so I figured with this kind of ex an experiment, we'd do a simpler block. So that's what I'm doing. As always, let me know what you're working on. Send email to lmarquidant at gmail.com. Text me. Again, send it to me via text or email or Post something on the Simply Colorful Facebook page or Google. And I have several things to share with you, but I'm just going get, to get started with this and make a little progress, and then I will bring you up to date on all sorts of things, including, very importantly, what happened on this day in 1863. So we should stop and think about that. So... As always, I need to make sure I have the right sides facing the right side. So there, and then I literally will put this over like this. You can see I've got my brother out. I leave, I'm so glad that it's here when we come down because I don't have to think about lugging anything or carrying anything I just know it's here sounds pretty good huh and good and on the back it looks like with the plaid, I want to make sure the plaid is comp is straight across, and it looks good. Looks almost good. I can see a little bit here, so I'm going to put put the size of my stitch down just a bit, and I'm going over it a second time. tell you it is nice out here if we were in a closed in screened in porch then I'd be sure the bugs wouldn't get me but you know I have lights here so I figure the bugs will go to the lights that's that's the plan anyway and I told them ahead of time okay so there's my first stitch now I'm going to work on the two sides of the basket and then we will jump right into you all that are out there. Okay. So, 
course, I don't have a whole lot of extra fabric, which is just classic. I hope you're pulling out something fun to work on. Make sure this is... And that you're looking forward to a nice, at least, three-day long weekend. Hopefully, maybe four. Bob and I have been on vacation for the last two days. And it sure has been nice. So we're already a little bit in the vacation mood. And for those of you who might be fighting traffic now, hang in there. had one friend who was stuck in the Detroit airport overnight. I felt bad for her. So you know I'm no Jenny uh, Doan. Not Jenny Doan. Oh, jeez. Carol Doak. She would not like the haphazardness of my paper piecing. But I think we're good. So that's one side of the basket right there. And now we'll do the other side. Go. Pull this off a little bit. Go. You know, I always like to make a little progress before I start chit-chatting. About non-quilty things. <laughs> oh, and I just, look at what I did. I just sewed over my piece. Uh, we'll undo that. Lickety split. I didn't have such dull scissors. Where are all my scissors when I need them? I want to hear something really odd. KB, if you're out there, I cannot believe this. <laughs> I've lost or I've, I've used mom's good scissors and I lost them. <laughs> Not good. So they're on, a, they're on the Christmas list. Oh, I can hear you guys out there. I'm psyched. Hopefully. Okay, that's fixed. And we'll cut that and then we'll see who's out there. Okay, so it's starting to look like a basket. Here, let's put that there. And then just to give you, whet your appetite, this is going to go on the top. And then we're going to do a bottom. It'll go across like that. All right. So who do we have out there? First, before I go any further, I want to make a special shout out to Juliana. If you're out there, I see you. And I saw you this morning. And I just wanted to make sure that I knew, Juliana, you were out there. And I know Romper Room, all those years ago, did not know you. But we at Fibercast do. Okay, so what do I have here? Jean! Hi, Jean! First off, oh, Jean sends us a picture of what's under her needle from Cider Mill Quilts. And just before I go any further, congratulations to your daughter Maddie on her new job. That is great news. A new Bucknell graduate, and she's already got a job. Okay, so Jean says, here's what's under my needle tonight. I've made three of my four sets, and I'm determined to finish the fourth before my head hits the pillow. 
She says, each step takes about an hour, so guess how I am motivating myself to do the last one? Yay! Oh, look at that. It's like a modified braid. Oh, there goes my one of my lights, but it's okay. We don't need it. It's fine. Oh, that's very neat. Hello. Thank you. See, and there is the braid. Very nice. Send us a picture of the fourth one if it gets done. That'll be great. Eileen Arun, hello. Eileen says, I'm working on my birds of a feather quilt and thinking of the families in Orlando. So that was last week. This week she says, happy fourth, everyone. She's working on her wonky basket quilt tonight. You read my mind because I didn't tell you I was doing the Rebecca's basket, did I? Amazing. Now let me see if I can click on this and see your picture. I love when you send that. Eileen does Twitter, so oh my goodness, look at you. Just lovely. Isn't that great? Wow. Thanks, Eileen. Oh, and I like how you have the love on top. Is this your own design? I bet it is. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I can get to your other one, Birds of a Feather. Do you quilt full time? Oh, that's right. We showed this one last week. Love this one, too. Isn't that fun? I love your modern colors and your modern design. It's great. Uh, hey, KB is out there. Hi. Happy 4th of July. KB says, oh, she says, great shot and sound tonight. Yay. I'm making up for last Friday night. I'm glad to hear that, KB. That makes my day. Glad you told the bugs ahead of time to leave you alone. I did. I did. I kept swearing them off. She says, enjoy your weekend. We've set an aggressive goal of hitting at least five picnics by Monday. You can do it. <laughs> the s oh, and then my sister KB, for anyone who didn't know out there, KB is my sister in Pennsylvania. Do you remember I was just telling you about the scissors? and how I've somehow lost my mother's scissors. This is her retort. That scissors thing is why I'm her favorite, she says. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, let me keep going. I'm so glad you're all out there. And again, Juliana, if you're out there, hello. Kind of, a, as you might know, this kind of an inside joke. I saw Julie. Her real name's Juliana. Saw her this morning. She and another friend of mine, Elise. Hi, Elise, if you're out there. We used to waitress when we were in school, and we just caught up this morning. First thing, 8 o'clock. Aren't you proud of us? And we had a nice time. Okay, so I figure what I'm doing now, just so you know, is I did cut out the basket top and I'm just going to, to rough hem under a quarter of an inch. It's going to be tough to get a whole quarter of an inch though because it's a tight curve. So I may not. I'm doing more like an eighth of an inch and then I'll just trim it on the other side, I think. I think that's what I'll do. There's something I like basting for applique. You know how you put it all on the needle and then you just pull it through? It's good, you know, when the thread pulls and doesn't 
Uh-oh. There's a bug. There's our first bug. Uh-oh. Goodbye, beetle. Go. Go. Shoo. <laughs> so what are you all doing for the 4th of July? I hope you have picnics. Five could be a good number to strive for. We have one so far on Monday night after we're going to go see the parade and try to catch candy from the fire trucks and then come back to my aunt's for a cookout. Can't wait. Apparently, I didn't know I did this really, every time we have come down to visit lately, I have gone to the supermarket and I've packed up the makings for s'mores. Does everyone know what s'mores are? Those yummy gooey things you make around the campfire with a marshmallow and your chocolate and your graham cracker and you make a sandwich and it's incredibly sweet. Well, apparently, the last couple of times I've been coming down here, I have brought full makings. So we have maybe, possibly three parties worth of some more makings. At least two. So we, we now know what we're bringing, at least one thing. So I've done the inside there. And now I'm just going to do a much bigger, oh, this is how it'll be easier. See, on this one, I can almost do three-eighths. I don't want my basket handle to look too bulky because it is a little block after all. For anyone out there, oh, Leah, Leah, if you're out there, I don't know if I say Leah or Lee, I think it's spelled L-E-A, loved getting your email a few days ago, and I love that you were making your Dear Jane blocks along with Fibercast, that's great. For anyone who might not be familiar with the Dear Jane quilt, just a little update. It, it was made back in 1863 also, which is apropos of our day today. We're going to talk a little bit about history, and of course I'm going to use my cheat sheet because I, that's, that's how I roll. Jane Stickle is a woman who lived during Civil War times, and she is believed to have made this Dear Jane quilt that I will show you and you can look it up there are thousands of iterations of it but that's the original in very Civil War colors it has 225 patterns between the squares and the triangles and they're all different and this book if you don't have it look for a used one or get a new one it's a great way to see the line drawings of all of the blocks and you can actually use it to take notes on. Now this one I have put the fabrics I used but I have not written in it which is highly that's frowned upon. Conversely I've already started to write the Rebecca's one. I J. So anyway, what I do is every time I make a block, I write about it and I put the fabric in. And it's just, it's fun to go back and look. So here we have Rebecca's basket. July 1st, 2016, started this block outside a mom's deck during Fibercast. And I'll put the fabric in there. Anyway, the Dear Jane quilt. Again, <clears throat> It was done during the Civil War. There's not too much known about the maker. Jane A. Blakely Stickle. And it was actually, this quilt was in the same plain and fancy book 40 years ago about Vermont quilts. The same one that my grandmother's or my, on my father's side, if, if this is true, my great great grandmother's quilt, but really I think of it as Grammy's quilt, was in Plain and Fancy, made around the same time. So anyway, they were both in the same book. It's now in the Bennington Museum in Vermont, and there's a bug on this one too. <laughs> I should have called this episode Bugs and Fabric. Anyway, 
what else do we know about Jane? We don't know very much. Um, let's see. Information about Jane and her family was not acquired quickly. Um, she was born in 1817, the daughter of Erastus Blakely and Sarah Rain. Oh boy. No problemo. Then she... Jane married a Walter Stickle, um, which names him the head of the household. It doesn't show that Jane or Walter had children of their own. However, a search of the Shaftesbury School District record records reveal they assumed responsibility for at least three children, which is very common in wartime, right? Whether it's the Civil War, the World War One, World War Two, you wanted to protect the children, and oftentimes that meant you sent them to the, the country or to somewhere else. Um, well, Jane Stickley, uh, she passed away in 1896 at the age of 79. Wow. So if that isn't proof that quilting can keep you going, there you go. Anyway, Dear Jane Quilt, definitely find this if you're at all interested. And... Why don't we do a little more sewing, and then we'll talk about the fact that the Gettysburg battle began on this day many, many years ago. <laughs> now, I, now I need to look at my cheat sheet. Jean is out there laughing, my history buff. Oh, I don't have, I hope I, 1863, just like the quilt, da-da-da-da-da. It was a three-day battle. You know how we've always heard about Gettysburg all these years and all? It was the biggest, bloodiest battle on American soil. And um, I'll read us about it from history.today. Another place to go if you've not been there is if you haven't been out to Pennsylvania to the Gettysburg fields, that is a remarkable trip. And they have set it up so beautifully that you can do a, a car tour of it. And you can literally, as you're driving around, you can pull up to each site and you can listen. Very good. It's definitely a couple. If you really want to do it right, Bob and I think it's a few days. Uh, maybe one to one and a half days, knowing my attention span. But on a beautiful day, spring or fall, Rent a hotel and do it. So I'm just trimming this up a little bit because I I bent it over quite a bit. All right. So we have the top of our basket. And that I'm even going to just lightly tack. Oh, and do you see what I did wrong? I should have sewn that right into the seam. But, and who knows, maybe I can go back and do it. For now, I'm just going to yeah, just staple it, or pin it. All right. So, our Rebecca's basket is starting to grow. Now what we want to do is we want to make the bottom part. And for that, hmm. see, whoops, hang on, it's getting a little windy here. A little windy. And I have there we go. Excuse me, one second. Don't leave me. Don't fall asleep yet.
stay there. Stay right there. There we go. All right. So now we're going to make the bottom part. And I'm going to start with this. And then this, I'm lining it up. I should be showing you this. There we go. All right. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my paper piecing and the light is shining through and helping me line it up. Colleen, if you're out there, hello. And KK in San Diego, hello. And Sandra and Marquet and Norma. Can you believe we've been doing this? This is crazy. This is our third 4th of July. How's that? Oh, and I almost did something wrong, in the wrong order. First, I have to do the two sides. My glasses is on. Okay. Huh. It's hard to see the right and wrong side of white in the dark here, but we're doing it. What a mess. Okay, let's just do this. So, in all of the holiday festivities, I hope people are getting some time to sew. I know holidays are supposed to be fun, but frankly, oftentimes they're... Peanut gallery is, is behind me. I'm having a hard time not listening to them. <laughs> okay. So let's see. It's just. But they're trying to help me, so I should be quiet. All right, there we finally have the sewing machine going. And then this. Aha, the plant. Oh, good. Yay, my lighting team is working on the lighting. All right, and I'm just going to keep doing this. You'll notice we don't have any band music. The band's home playing while we're down here. Okay, now we've done the basket. Okay. These scissors aren't very sharp. I wish I had mom's good scissors. <laughs> but I lost them. And we're just doing this. <laughs> this is just a beautiful thing. Look at what just appeared. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> ah, I love it. So, Chris, if you're out there, hello. I do believe that Violet is there with your daughter, Abby. 
and I'm hoping they know each other. At camp, that is. And I had a nice time at the beach with Allie today, another cousin. And she and I have picked out a doll we're going to make together for the fair. Oh, my lighting crew is in town. Okay, so thank you. Can you see me better? Here is, let's see. Yeah, well... This is the start. Now what I'm going to do is put this over. Like this. Doing the bottom piece. It's all going to come together and you're going to recognize it as a basket. I know it doesn't look like that yet. Can you imagine Jane Stickle doing this? See, you know, this is kind of the same. She did it with candlelight, probably inside her house, and we're outside our house with LED lights, but it's kind of the same. <laughs> and, a, and a powered sewing machine. And Mummy's good scissors. Or another pair of mummies. These aren't the these aren't the ones I lost, by the way. And, okay, so I did do it right. I thought for sure just a minute ago that I hadn't. So now I'm going to cut away excess fabric. And this is going to start coming together. Okay. So this is the bottom of the basket. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these out on the lines, and these scissors are wonderful. What are you all working on? Remember, Fibercast isn't a tutorial, clearly, because <laughs> you don't want to do it the way I do it most of the time. And it's just a way for us to get together on a Friday night after a week or before a weekend or whenever. You can always play this at your leisure. It doesn't have to be live on Friday night, but of course I love it when you're here live and we can trade emails, but Fibercast is just all about us making time for ourselves and to play with fabric and to do two things that we enjoy doing. And I'm so glad you're here doing it with me. Next week we'll be back in the home studio. In fact, we'll be in the home studio for a few weeks. And then I'll be in California again the end of the month. And what I might do is I might do another fiber cast before I leave for California. Just so that we all know what to expect, you know. Sometimes it's kind of disappointing. For me, too, you know, when those fiber casts don't come off when I'm on the road, it's uh, it bums me out because I see that you're there, and I know that we could spend an hour together, and the technology just didn't work. So I try to minimize that. I feel bad when that happens. And, and just know that on my end, I'm bummed out because I know you're out there and basically it's like we had a play date and we couldn't do it, right? Okay, so here's the top of our basket. Hey, ding. And here's the bottom of our basket. And it's going to go together. We're going to make a basket. All right, let's put that down so we can look at it for a minute. All of this... That was a pretty easy block, huh? Pretty excited. Not that it's completely done. We still have, and we have time to whip stitch it. Oh, there's a little bug, but not a big one. And he's off white, so if we smush it, it's fine. <laughs> Who's out there? I just heard a ding. Uh-oh, Mark Hayes. 
We keep trying to watch you and it says this page is not available. Error 404. Error 404. Said try searching for something else. Hmm. Error 404. I don't know what that is. Have you have you literally turned everything off and turned it back on? Uh, I want to say hi to Jerry. I'm going to say hi to Jerry here. And I hope that if you reboot and put it back on, it should come up. It looks like we have we have quite a few people on, so I'm hoping try rebooting. In fact, try rebooting. When all else fails, turn it off and start again. So who else is out there? Let's see. Hey, Sue! My fellow fiber caster. And my fellow dear Janer, I mean. Didn't get to watch Fibercast till this morning, she says. Yesterday I took a two-hour nap yesterday afternoon. Nice. Then I realized I must have missed Fibercast. Anyway, I'm watching this morning and I have 25 hexes so far. See you next Friday. Well, hello. I hope you're here. And Sue wrote that on the 27th of June. And we have another little crawly bug here. We're just going to leave him. Oh! Mark says he got us on the phone. Hi, Mark. Hi, Jerry. We're all sending good wishes, hoping you feel better every day. Bob says hi. Let's see these hexes. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that. Sue, thank you. Those are her hexes from last week. I love how you're making those. Oh, and I think I just saw Jean. Jean, Jean, Jean. She says these are bats. Her panels. Oh my goodness. She finished the fourth one. They're bats and they're done and so am I, she says. Look at that. Those are great. Those are wonderful. Thank you, Jean. You're like, you're getting ready for Halloween early. Wow. Oh, I'm so nice to, I'm so glad to see that. Patty Bannister in Texas. Hi, Patty. Whoops, things are flying away here. She says, hello, Lana and Fibercasters. Greetings from the playground in Pennsylvania. She says, I'm watching Fibercast while watching my granddaughter play. Oh, that's great. It's our second trip. Winston Ways is under my needle. I'm quilting it with a fan pattern, enjoying the cool weather. Oh, here's a bu another bug. Happy holiday weekend, Patty. Uh-oh. <laughs> now the bugs are really coming up. This is funny, you guys. Happy holiday weekend, says Patty. To you, too. I'm glad you're up in Pennsylvania. Hi to your, your extended family. Ding! We know who that is, speaking of Pennsylvania. Hello, Maureen. Oh, Maureen says she loves tonight's location. Great idea. Thank you. She says, I'm making an Ohio star for my guild's raffle quilt for, uh, for this month, my raffle block for this month. Does Do any other fiber casters have any other ideas to do monthly? Ooh, happy fourth, everyone, from Maureen. So the question is for your guild, any ideas that you have had luck with doing something monthly? And she's doing a block of the month. Um... I don't see a picture of it right there. Let's think about monthly things. It's it's tough. It it almost depends on the makeup of your guild is one idea. If if they have a lot more time, you can do more things maybe to get them together a second time during the month to work on a whether it's a group charity quilt or a group project. If they're full-time working, um, something monthly, in my experience, has sometimes turned into a chore. But that's just me, you know, because I have a lot of other things that I want to do kind of on my own. Then, but what have we done monthly? 
We've done crayons in a bag, and I really am not the right one for this. There are people in our Marathon Quilt Guild that are so creative with this. Put a crayon in the bag and maybe a saying and hand that out one month and say, come back next month and make a square that has that color and symbolizes or communicates the saying that was in the bag. Um, monthly. Definitely a block of the month because then at the end of the, the year, you have something that that's kind of neat. Um, that's all I can think of right now. But everyone else, if you think of things that your your guild has done once a month, let us know. That'd be good. Bobby, hi. Bobby says I had the book and have started on the blocks. Wonderful, she says. This came. To be today. I'm so excited. Now I have both worlds. Have a great 4th of July and so on. Bobby in Northeast North Carolina. I think that's it. N E N C? Or is that somewhere in another part of the. Ah! She got her Dear Jane software. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. Here we go. We're going to finish our Dear Jane. Norma. Hi, Norma. She says, I'm watching tonight. I've been busy with my youngest daughter and her two kids. They're going to be living with us for a bit, so I'm having to turn my sewing room back into a bedroom. That's okay. You know it's temporary. Um, uh, so, I will be back to the sewing at the kitchen table again, which I love so much because I can see outside way better. But I'm still going to fix a design wall in the room because it sure will be better than sandwiching the quilt on the floor. I'm getting too old for that. LOL. Hope everyone has a nice weekend. Thank you, Norma. You too. Sounds fun. Won't it be fun to have other people in the house? And your kitchen you've just finished with that beautiful deck and the view of the running river. So I, I envy that view. And I'm glad you're out there. Robin. Hi, Robin. She says, good evening, Lynn. I'm working on the Studio Star by Jenny Doan. Just four more blocks to go, and then to put the quilt top together. I love our Friday nights together, she says. My plan is to sew all weekend. Enjoy your holiday, Robin, Robin from Northern Kentucky. You too. I'm so glad to know you're out there, Robin. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can expand this. Oh, I love those. Subtle yet modern all at the same time. That is great. I really like that. Oh, and a ding from Ben. Hi, Ben. He says, looking good. So happy to watch. I'm happy you're there, too. And I love to hear about the horseback riding. It's Reed's Adventures with Allie sound wonderful. Okay. So, Robin, I'm so glad you're out there. Oh, Jerry Hayes. I spelled your name wrong. It's G-E-R-I. Jerry Hayes says, Hey, Lynn, I got your shout-out, and it was a shot in the arm. Thanks, Jerry and Mark. Oh, from Jerry, who's always seeking new adventures. Oh, I'm glad. Every Friday night, you know, at 8 p.m. And before you know it, if, and if you want, I can send you out a little... Tell me if you like to do cross stitch or anything little, you know, while you're recuperating. I'll send you out something. Okay. Oh, thank you. So Bobby does say, yes, northeastern North Carolina. Good. I'm glad I got that right. Colleen, hi. She says, I'm here watching you live from hot, dry California. Oh, this is cute. She signs it, Colleen, Colleen, Colleen. Oh, boy. I think you might be in the running, Colleen. Jean's gone to bed, so she's not counting anymore. Cassandra, hi. She says, hi. I love that you are outside. What a great idea. Thank you. It's really lovely out here. The bugs definitely have come out, I must say. But it's, it's breezy, and it's lovely. She says, I'm quilting a Tula Pink designed quilt. I call it Fruit Loops. It's for my 84-year-old Aunt Decorus. She is the last of the four siblings, and I decided to back it with a beautiful old sheet that was my mother's. I've never used a sheet as backing before, but this choice seemed right. 
and I think my aunt will appreciate it as she and my mother were very close. Happy 4th, Sandy Grog in Cincinnati. What a nice idea. And hopefully, whenever I hear using the back of a sheet, hopefully it's probably, if it was your mother's, it probably isn't an issue. The, if sheets are woven way too tight, I always have a problem getting through that fabric. Like It's like more like a batik. But... I bet you won't have that problem at all. I can't wait to see a picture. Ah, and here's the picture. Tap to download. Here it comes. Oh, that's beautiful. Love this. Very bright. Very simple. Again, it's looking more modern. You know, the fabrics are so beautiful. Why not let them do some of the work these days? I like that a lot. Did you make it with a jelly roll? Ginger Rose! Hello! I haven't thought of Ginger Rose lately. She says, hi Lynn and everyone else on Fibercast land. Oh, to be on the vineyard, she says. It's hot and muggy here in central Mississippi, so I'm enjoying my air conditioning, as you should. And believe me, it gets muggy here. It's nice right now. We've lucked out. But there have been some 4th of Julys that all you wanted to do was just soak in the ocean or sit in front of a fan or go into the shower. You know how you go to a shower? Take a shower, then come out and sit right in the fan. And while you're still wet, the fan dries over you. So I hope Mississippi is... Is it raining there yet? Crazy weather still coming across the country. Anyway, enough about the weather. Ginger Rose says, This afternoon I finished binding a set of paper-pieced mug rugs done for my guild's Christmas in July competition. That's an excellent idea. So Maureen in Pennsylvania, maybe there's something to do monthly around a holiday. You could make a mug rug for the holiday in that month. And if there isn't a holiday in that month, maybe use that to have people make up a holiday they wish existed. For example, I've often wondered why there isn't a daughter's day. <laughs> I hope KB you're laughing out there. I think we deserve a day. Okay. So anyway, let's see. We were given a piece of red dotted fabric, and we were challenged to make something with it using no more than four. She says, I actually use both the front and back of mine to give my trees more variety. Oh, that's neat. Oh, that's neat. Of the fabric. That's a great idea. It's like having two colors. When you get a piece of fabric, the front and the back, unless it's woven or it's... But most like, usually when it's printed, you have two different fabrics in your palette. So, I'm spinning... What? Ginger! This is so exciting. So, in addition to making the Christmas mug rugs, Ginger goes on to say, I'm also spinning some merino silk fiber tonight, hoping for a lace weight yarn. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see it. Hugs from Ginger in central Mississippi. Oh, and look at these Christmas mug rugs. Aren't those great? And you know, we're going to a Christmas in July wedding in a few weeks. That is so nice. Those are lovely. Please let us know how your spinning goes. And what are you going to, when you get your lace weight yarn, are you going to make a lace shawl? What are we doing with it? Oh, Ginger, I'm so glad you're out there. Pam, hi. Chat, she says, hi, Lynn and all fiber casters. Hope all is well with everyone. Watching you make your doll last week was fascinating. I'm looking forward to seeing it tomorrow morning. Oh, she said, well, if you're watching this, you can see I'm not doing the doll, but next Friday, I think I'm going to be back to doing the doll. Although, I might pull out a braided rug that I need to get finished, but we'll figure it out. You will see that doll get finished. She says, I had one of those air ovens. It cooks the most delicious chicken. That's good. That's good to know. When my doll phase is done, I'll use it for cooking. I've been sewing today, the first time since I came back from Southern Ireland two weeks ago. I think I will start on my Christmas presents and get them done early. I'm kind of jazzed too. Ginger has gotten me thinking. I think you should. I'm going to do that too. The decision now is what to make and what fabric to use. I do struggle with the colors, usually changing my mind about half a dozen times. I need someone to stay, say, here's the pattern and fabric, now get on with it. Best wishes, Pamela. Well, I'm glad you're there, and I know what you mean. 
I know what you mean. We were looking on Pinterest today for a doll for Allie to make. And Tuck, I was so proud of her, though. For a young girl, she was able to assess the different options. And you definitely, in Pinterest, as anyone who's ever used Pinterest knows, you can go on forever and research something and look for something. And that the same is true with dolls. And we did find hundreds, literally hundreds of doll pictures. And she was able to get it down to a handful. And she, she was deliberate. She took her time. She knew there were a lot. She went back and forth. Um, but then she picked. And I think we're going to stick with it. So I was really impressed with that. That, that takes a lot to be able to just say, this is what we're going to do. So anyway, um, Pamela, let me know what you decide for Christmas. I can't wait to see it. Hi, Beth Allen. I'm so glad you're out there. I'm going to read your note in a minute. It's occurring to me I should probably finish up my Rebecca's basket within the hour. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a real slouch. Okay, so all I have to do is sew these two pieces together. <laughs> have you seen the bugs? This is a riot. They're not really biting me. They're just kind of hanging out, which is good. All right. Look at that. That's a pretty bug. Really, I'm going to Oh, this is a keeper. You guys. So pretend the top is on. There is our Rebecca's basket. And I might have time to to applique that on. Yeah, let's see. I'll thread my needle. I don't know how we're doing here. I want to make sure I just dropped the thread. Oh my goodness, there are bugs on me. I want to make sure that I get to everyone's emails. There we go. This is a little needle. So, while we start to wrap up, let's talk. Let's finish out the hour talking about what happened in 1863 at Gettysburg, the Civil War. And I'm going to read it to you, just as a reminder of where, where we've been and, and all of the sacrifices that people have made ahead of us so that we can enjoy five cookouts in a weekend so we can enjoy the indulgence of sitting here with loved ones around catering to my every whim and my every need while I get to sew and do something I love and it's because others before us have protected us and that happened in 1863 on the battlefield in Pennsylvania and I want to read to you a little just a little bit as we close out Fibercast Batty, the Battle of Gettysburg began in 1863 on this day, July 1st. It was the largest military conflict in North American history began when the Union and Confederate forces collide in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The epic battle lasted three days and resulted in a retreat to Virginia by Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Two months prior to Gettysburg, Lee had dealt a stunning defeat to the Army of the Potomac in Chancellorsville, Virginia. He then made plans for a northern invasion in order to relieve pressure on the war-weary Virginia and to seize the initiative from the Yankees. His army, numbering about 80,000, began moving on June 3rd. The Army of the Potomac, commanded by Joseph Hooker and numbering just under 100,000, wow, began moving shortly thereafter staying between Lee and Washington, D.C., but on June 28, frustrated by the Lincoln administration's restrictions on his autonomy as commander, Hooker resigned and re was replaced by George G. Meade. 
Meade took command of the Army of the Potomac as Lee's army moved into Pennsylvania. And on the morning of July 1st, advanced units of the forces came into contact with one another just outside of Gettysburg. The sound of battle attracted other units, and by noon the conflict was raging. During the first hours of the battle, Union General John Reynolds was killed, and the Yankees found that they were outnumbered. The battle lines ran around the northwestern rim of Gettysburg, the Confederates applied pressure all along the Union front, and they slowly drove the Yankees through the town. By evening, the Federal troops rallied on high ground on the southeastern ridge of Gettysburg. As more troops arrived, Meade's army formed a three-mile-long, fishhook-shaped line running from Culp's Hill on the right flank along Cemetery Hill and Cemetery Ridge to the base of Little Round Top. The Confederates held Gettysburg and stretched along a six-mile arc around the Union position. Lee's forces would continue to battle each end of the Union position before launching the infamous Pickett's Charge against the Union Center on July 3rd. Other things that happened on July 1st in past. In 2005, the last Ford Thunderbird was produced. In 2002, two planes collided over Germany on July 1st. Um, in 1984, this is interesting, the PG-13 rating debuted. I thought that was in existence long before 1984. PG-84. The Motion Picture Association, which oversees the voluntary rating system for movies, introduced a new rating, PG-13. Doesn't say much more than that. And in 1979, so let's end on an upbeat. On this day, July 1st, the first Sony Walkman went on sale. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and in 1916, Dwight Eisenhower married his Mamie. So a lot can happen on July 1st, that's, that's for sure. On July 1st here in 2016, we had a fiber cast. We did have it outside, we did have bugs, but we were able to complete another Dear Jane block. If you haven't started Dear Jane, go for it. It's fun. It'll take you years, but it'll be fun. We'll do it together. Thanks for joining me on Fibercast. I am so glad so many of you could be here. Have a great holiday weekend, and next Friday, I will come to you from our home studio up in Hopkinton. So have a great weekend, everyone. Happy 4th of July. Bye. Oh, the bugs have gotten into my mouth. I can't find it. Let's see. Here we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>